Hi, my name is Scott Trenet from Paranormal Investigators of Boston. I'd like to welcome you to this historical haunted hangout at Old South Main House here in Boston, Massachusetts. With me today is Robin. Robin DeVolsey is the director of marketing here at the uh, Old South Meeting House. So today we're going to be discussing a recent paranormal investigation that my team has had here at the Old South Meeting House. And, and to join in our conversation, you can send us your questions through the Paraboston Plus event page or our Paraboston Facebook page. Or by tweeting with the hashtag of the pound sign, SMH Boston. Or if you'd like, you can text me at uh, 857 363 Come right here on my phone. And we'll read your, your questions right here on air and uh, try to answer them the best we can. Um, so as I stated, I am with Para Boston, and we are a parent investigation team based here in Massachusetts. And we believe that uh, skillful coordination of science and uh, research and analysis helps us with, to keep our credibility in, in our investigations. Uh, so before we answer some questions a bit, I'd like to turn it over to Robin. And she can discuss to you about uh, this wonderful place that we're sitting in here today. Thank you, Scott. So my name is Robin Tulasi, and we are here in Old South Meeting House in Boston. This is a 1729 meeting house. It was a Puritan church. The uh, land is far more historic. It goes back even earlier. There was a building like built on the is in and out. Uh, I'm on 4G, and it's, it's like delayed. It's, uh, I lose the screen every once in a while. When they contacted us to see if we'd be interested in having an investigation done here. And we had heard some stories of some mysterious activity that had taken place here in the hall. Um, some of the just sort of casual encounters of uh, shadowy figures or feeling like somebody else was in a room with you. But then there was also a long standing story that there were the sounds of horses running around in the hall and that there was. Um, the smell of hay. And while that does seem unusual for a Puritan church, uh, we're going to flip to a picture that's going to get you an idea of why that was a um, something we thought could be happening here. In the uh, years of the Revolution, Old South Meeting House was a place for a lot of uh, public discussion and civic events, and the building was punished for our role in the American Revolution, primarily the Boston Tea Party of 1773. The British came in and they destroyed the interior and they brought in their horses. And for about a year, the British used this as a riding school and stable. So while most Puritan meeting houses don't have a reputation for having the smell of hay or the sound of horses stomping around, it made a lot of sense that we might. Um, when we brought in the team from Para Boston, we found that there were a few other things going on here in the space. And we're going to tell you more about what happened in our investigation. Before we do that, I'd like to uh, introduce to you a few of my uh, investigators that were here that evening. Uh, we have Bart and, and Heidi, Mike and Jen, and Cal. Say hi, guys. Hello. Um, they're going to help uh, tell you about some of the events that went on here. And uh, I want to start with, uh, with the Old South Mountain House. Uh, one of the personal experiences we've had. Uh, fortunately, personal experiences are experiences that we don't capture on film. Nevertheless, they're still personal experiences and it's great to uh, hear about. And Heidi has had a personal experience while she was in here, and hopefully, uh, Heidi can tell us a little bit about her experience. I was downstairs by the side door there talking to Calvin and Bree, and I saw something that I thought was like a bug um, come around Bree's head, and it kind of evaporated like a puff of smoke. So that's a pretty amazing uh, experience for, uh, for most people. And Mike, we captured an EVP, if I'm not mistaken, uh, up in the bell tower, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And the background said, Who's that? 
And uh, as uh, Calvin uh, will explain to you, Calvin, Calvin has said you've gotten some pretty much uh, some knocking noises, some chain noises up uh, on the second tier of this beautiful building. Yes. It was It wasn't outside, I'm sorry about that. And so we tried to go down and find the source of it, but we couldn't find any source. Well, we'd like to open up the line so you guys, if uh, anybody has any questions, or tweet us at uh, pound sign OSMH Boston, or uh, text us 857-363-0298, send us a chat, and we'll answer any questions you guys might have. Coming in on our Twitter account, and they're asking what you guys think is the spookiest place in Boston. Well, it's kind of a, a little bit of a question. Uh, spooky to investigate is kind of like the weirdest place you've ever been into, but not as far as uh, investigation. I'd say um, the, uh, the weirdest place we've ever been into is probably the Square Theater in Hyde Park. Um, the place was pretty amazing. It was a rundown theater. You can find plenty of pieces. The theater is actually going to be coming up on a destination fair episode. And um, on the second tier of that building, we've gotten some inhales and exhales coming from the projection room. So, another, nevertheless, a very that. But it, uh, if you ever looked at the building, it certainly looks very rundown and got an eerie feel about it. It'd be something you'd see in a horror movie. <laughs> Old South wasn't quite that creepy. But, uh, uh, it did sound like we had somebody walking around on the balcony and these guys stopped the investigation so we were quiet and you put a question out there and you wait to hear what the response is and then they have all this equipment around picking up on things that we may not be hearing or seeing ourselves. And so we would stop and say, okay, who moved in anywhere in the city building? So we'd stop and say, you know, who made that noise? And um, we just had a very consistent and repeated sound of somebody walking up on the upper level. And it was actually on the side of the balcony and there was a a decent amount of restoration over the years, but that stairwell is a 1729 original stairwell, and that's really getting a lot of information of somebody moving around. Even though we can't capture everything on uh, video or audio recorders like we would like to, um, nevertheless, uh, a lot of personal experiences, unfortunately, can't be personal experiences as, as uh, evidence because they're only personal experiences. And uh, that area of this building, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the noises that we were getting uh, were pretty interesting. I mean, we heard chain noises. It was pretty interesting, except for up in the bell tower, which is if anybody is not. It's amazing building, architectural work. It's incredible there. So, I mean, in the bell tower area, unfortunately, you guys don't have, you know. We have a, we have a picture we can show you of the clock tower. Um, so this is 1766 tower clock. Um, there's our steeple there. Uh, where you can see uh, where the round circle is in the room where our clock is, and above it is our bell. There is a 66 power clock that we have here in our steeple. It is the oldest American made power clock in the original location on the room here in the US. And above it, we've recently installed an 18 to 1 bell. And we've had some trouble with the bell since it was installed, and we're joking around that its maker, Paul Revere, might not be too 
piece that we're hitting the bell with the clock because the bell was designed to be on the wheel. So it is sort of fun that that was where we got an EVP sound up in the balcony, uh, up in the steeple, where uh, it could have been Mr. Revere's bell. <laughs> Uh, so again, if you'd like to send us uh, a text message uh, uh, here on the uh, chat site or here on the uh, bus or the hashtag us at OSMH or uh, Boston, or just uh, call, send a text to 857 363 We answer any questions you have. We, we go into a place this size. Um, actually, into any place. The equipment involved with the investigations capacity. We have 15 investigators who work very diligently at getting stuff set up here. Um, we come in with a bunch of infrared cameras. I think we set up probably close to eight. Is that correct, Mark? Okay. And what had happened was, is I had a camera on the bottom of the stairwell, and it recorded two hours of video, but there was no no noticeable no motion. So that was kind of an interesting thing. But all the other cameras would blink on and off as things happened. Behind the bar, we also had a deep shot out of this wonderful place as a new investigator. Um, another aspect to our group, and I just want her to say hello. She's in training right now, and she's learning quite a bit. Sure, yeah. Say hi, Jen. Say hi to everybody. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. On top of the uh, infrared cameras that we come in here with, we, we come in here with K2 meters, uh, electromagnetic field detectors. And um, any other kind of equipment we can possibly think of to read some kind of But But uh, outside the cameras, our biggest assets uh, investigation is definitely the audio recorder. In a building of this size, it's kind of hard to capture audio recorders everywhere. Uh, audio everywhere from if we do an EPP session. An EPP session is an electronic session. We ask questions, yeah. and we get responses, which are the boss of the audio recorders. So a place in this side that we can we'll set, set up a bunch of audio recorders. <coughs> and with the audio recorders, we'll set up a bunch of market targets. So when we answer questions in one designated area, uh, let me stop myself for a second. When we do an EVP session, all our, all our investigators are this helps eliminate any possibility of noises from anybody else in any else in this building, especially to this size. So when we set up the audio recorders every day, we'll set up the talking uh, questions through the walking talking. Uh, one does it maybe get that with producers through the other side of walkie talkie and hopefully if we get kind of uh, response, it's gonna come the most audio recorders with the talking. So it's a, you know, it's a, a very simple process, but at the same time, very exciting. Um, Heidi, why don't you explain to our wonderful audience what an EMF detector is? EMF detects electromagnetic um, a field around electronics like computers, TVs. Um, and it's supposed to be able to um, detect ghosts. Uh, See, this is, this is the, another issue that uh, uh, people seem to be the equipment we use is to help detect paranormal activity. Quite the opposite. It's the other thing that helps us become uh, everything else. If it's not made for Detecting those. In fact, we don't even know so ghosts exist. So, you, how do you find something, detect something? Say it is. 
Um, you can find something to measure how this is. We're going to uh, talk to uh, you know, me sitting here jabbing away for a little bit. And we're going to have our investigators uh, go to uh, the buildings. And maybe we can try to do a little evening or try to do something, try to enhance the paranormal activity. So, um, this is the part where uh, I guess we're going to we kill the lights a little bit, or is that going to affect the cameras? All right. So, Calvin, uh, you're all right. You're all set where you are. If you guys want to find a dark area, uh, Mike, if you want to head up to the bell tower. And uh, we're going to follow Mike up to the bell tower. And maybe he can give you a nice uh, view, hopefully, of uh, you can see what it looks like back there. Uh, as Ron was explaining, it's, it's actually beautiful back there. Unfortunately, uh, it's not open to the public, but it's very interesting area in the world. <laughs> You'll see he's heading up the stairwell now. He's heading up to the stairs that will bring you um, first to the second balcony. And then as he goes up further, on the level he's at now is um, what we call the Thomas Prince Library level. Uh, he was one of our early ministers here at Old South. And he kept the library up there in the steeple. As he goes up a little further, um, he's entering. <laughs> you can see it's, it's awfully dark and dim and spooky up there. Uh, he's entering a room where the pendulum of the clock hangs, and as he goes up even further, he's going to enter into the room where the clock is. Mike, uh, if you can, while you're walking up there, Mike, if you could show the clock and stuff, it would be great. He's just getting up to it now. <laughs> and there he is up in the clock room. Mike, view up the clock. He's getting around the corner. There it is. There's the clock. The, the, the bell above the, did we already the bell is on, the bell's on the next level up and it's connected through all that cabling that's that uh, Mike is showing you now um, the bell was found uh, it was in the town of Westboro mass and they were um, they were going to be selling the church building where it was um, so we were able to get it and install it here with our clock um, this, the 1766 tower clock you're seeing in front of you there is original made for this building uh, by a gentleman named Edwin Brown, who was a, a clockmaker who worked up the street. It's the only tower clock he ever made. And um, it could very well have been him who we were hearing as well. Although I have to say plenty of people have been up and down that steeple, workmen and steeplejacks and different um, folks over the years uh, doing projects up there in that steeple. And, and there was a lot of affection for this building. So just about anyone could, uh, could have been speaking to us from up there. Okay, uh, so if, Mike, if you can head up towards the bell area, it would be great. Just one more level. And Jen's walking there with Mike. <laughs> you want to go around to that little staircase. Don't take that ladder. <laughs> the ladder that you just saw there goes out to uh, the sides of the steeple where the clock hands attach to the mechanism in the center of the room. He's going up a little stairwell here up to the bell room. Now, none of our investigators, our investigators do not walk individually, so uh, Jen is accompanying Mike. Uh, for safety purposes, we, we, we work as teams. It may be awfully dark up there in the bell level. Uh, there's not quite as much light as in the level before. Mike, we don't know what's safe, so if there's not enough light up there, uh, you can just probably come back down to the clock area. Now, let me know if you hear anything while you're up there. Scott, what do you think about um, buildings or places that have, you know, people think that only buildings with sort of a traumatic past have paranormal activity. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I disagree. Um, anybody knows of the old Danvers uh, Asylum here up in Massachusetts. It's well been torn down. It's been had some paranormal experiences in that place. It's been torn down and new condos have been constructed. Uh, 
during the construction and uh, up to the point where the condos, they've gotten paranormal experiences on the ground. Uh, well, there have been claims of it from the con contractors that are working on the property. And I'm sure now that the condos are up, they're still getting um, some sort of paranormal experiences. And those are brand new. The problem is just because there's a building that doesn't necessarily mean uh, if paranormal experiences are happening in that area. The ground that that building sits on is much older than the building. So we, you know, it doesn't really matter the age of the building if you're getting any kind of paranormal experiences. It's just basically going to happen. It's going to happen. And our job is to go into a place and try to explain what's going on as much as we can. If we can't explain it, then it's still paranormal. It's the definition of paranormal is unexplained. So, um, again, let's uh, throw this back out there. If you have questions, you can send us a, a tweeter at OSMH Boston. Oh, excuse me, hashtag OSMH Boston, sorry. Um, or you can throw it right here on our live broadcast here on Google. Or you can send us a chat uh, using eight, uh, my phone here at 857 363 We would love to answer any questions you have, uh, if it's, whether it's about the building or just uh, the paranormal investigations in general. We did get one question here on Twitter asking um, if there are any people that could be haunting Old South Meeting House or just be horses. Uh, it's a good question. Um, Old South Meeting House has a long and storied history and some of the most amazing events in American history took place here. So uh, this is the, not only the place where the T-Tax debates took place, but this was an active and uh, engaged community during the Civil War, during the battles for free speech. And sort of any and all of those uh, elements could have some legacy here in the building. Um, so I, I would think that just about any of the, the things that have happened here in this space, you know, I was thinking, who could that have been who we heard walking around up there on the balcony? And you sort of want to pinpoint that maybe it was, you know, famous uh, slave poet Phyllis Wheatley, but maybe it was just somebody who had attended a lecture here and felt connected to this place. Uh, there's, you know, any number of, of things in our history. It's, you always sort of go to those famous celebrities, but surely millions of people pass through this hall. So it's sort of wonderful to think of all those possibilities. Robin, what were some of the most famous people that attended this place? Sure. Um, well, on this land in the original meeting house, that was where Ben Franklin was baptized. Um, it was also where the only apology for the Salem witch trials was given. Um, certainly a event that has great, uh, great weight for our nation and our neighborhoods and areas. Um, so that would be a little legacy left over from that. Um, in this building itself, this is where all of the big debates happened in advance of the American Revolution. So at the Tea Party, you have Paul Revere here, you have Sam Adams, you have Dr. Joseph Warren, James Otis, um, just about anyone you read about in a history book, John Hancock, they were all here debating about what it means to be a citizen. In our uh, later years, this was the place where folks gathered for civic events like um, when Lincoln uh, they came wow. here to do a memorial service and to do a prayer service. Uh, this was a really active community, and there was actually in the Civil War, there was a union recruiting station here in the building. Um, just a really wonderful community and engaged in what it means to be American throughout our history. Well, very proud place to be. <laughs> uh, Mike, how are we doing up there? Doing all right. How about yourself? I'm uh, doing well. <laughs> Uh, I see that we have one of our investigators have uh, joined us here from home. Hi, Bree. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. You want to chime in and tell us about any experiences you had here at the Old South Meeting House or um, what you were doing while you were here? Yeah. Um, last time we came and did the investigation, um, what we did was we tried to use some sound files uh, to hopefully prompt if uh, any activity that might have been here, um, you know, to make a sound or something, whether it's an EVP or something we could audibly hear. Um, and so what we did was we had some of the speeches, um, you know, that were given here. We had the audio files up. So 
first we played them um, as the actual audio file while the investigators were all silent, um, and then just let that play. And then we played it back again through one of Mike Baker's devices, which converts audio files, sound files, into EMF. Um, so we let that run, and uh, then we followed that up with some audio of a horse whinnying, uh, because some of the claims of activity is that there could be some horses. So we tried doing that also as sound files, and then again as uh, EMF uh, sound files. So what we did is we, we played that, and at one point we did hear something that sounded like, after we played the horse whinnies, we heard something that sounded like a chain rattling, and we all audibly heard it. Um, and I think uh, it may have been caught on some of the recorders, but it was so faint it was really hard to make it out because we couldn't, we couldn't detect which direction it actually came from because the acoustics in that building are really, you know, pretty crazy. Um, the other thing was a few times during the investigation, um, we actually, some of the investigators up in the balcony heard footsteps. Um, and that was something that several people, at least three of the investigators, all heard, and we could kind of pinpoint which corner we thought it was coming from. So that was really interesting. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what, what you guys are going to do tonight and see if you catch anything. Oh, I, we do it any chattel, chain rattling, and Bart is in the area we got most of the activity. So I'm just curious if he's experienced anything up there while he's there. I heard some footsteps. I don't know. So fortunately, uh, we're not getting much activity tonight as we did the other evening. Well, to be fair, we were very quiet during our first investigation, yes, and, and there's a lot of light and a lot of people milling around here tonight. The chain rattling noise was really something that was strange. I didn't expect it. It was right after we played these sort of loud um, horse noises here, and it was a very distinct sound, and we sort of um, all went up and down on the side of the hall where we were getting the noise and sort of moved around just about anything metal to see if we could replicate the noise, and nothing sounded like the noise we had all heard, and it was very distinct and uh, just really sort of an unusual timing uh, right after we had the horse noises playing here in the hall. So maybe there is indeed a horse here after all. You know, even though we can't verify the paranormal experience is uh, you know, the afterlife, who's to say if it is that, that it's only humans, you know, who are fast, uh, you know, causing this paranormal experience. It could be anything. Until we can put a measurement on it, it's just paranormal. But Mike, how are we doing up there? Doing okay. We're, uh, we're actually doing a live EVP recording right now up here in the clock tower. So oh, hopefully we'll catch something like we did on the last investigation uh, where we caught that male voice on this floor saying, who's that, after we heard a bang. Um, so hopefully we'll catch something. As I explained before, Jen is uh, up there with Mike. We work as teams to stay safe. So the two of them, um, if you're just joining us, are up in the... the uh, the clockworks area of this beautiful building, uh, doing an EVP session, and again, which is an electronic voice phenomenon, which we try to capture voices on digital recorders, um, you know, during uh, while asking questions. Scott, that actually connects to a question I'm getting here. Somebody's asking um, here on Twitter. They're out in Western Mass, and they want to know distinct sound you heard in an EVP or something? Was it something that you heard live or did you only capture it later? Well, um, an EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, is, is um, so you don't hear uh, electronic voice phenomenon with your own ears. If you hear it with your own ears, it's called a, an audible anomaly. Um, otherwise, it's, it's always recorded on digital recorders and you listen to it when you're going over the evidence later after the investigation is over. But the answer to the question what the most amazing uh, EVPs we've gotten is a place up at Weymouth. We've gotten a conversation uh, with a mother and a child. And uh, what was interesting about this house is, is they didn't have children. Their children, well, they had uh, children, but they were in the late 18 to 20 year old range. They weren't children, they were adults. And they 
the house, that the parents were out of the house, and I think the children weren't living there anymore. Um, but the AVP we got was pretty interesting. We got a child saying, uh, Mama, I'm watching. Uh, the uh, mother answered, uh, which sounds like I feel sorry, Matthew, and in a very distinct English girl uh, saying, a child uh, coming back with a comment saying, want to play a game. What made it more interesting was three with the third session and the second session. Everyone too. What is your name? Were you just talking to us? Uh, Hello. Um, we got anyway. We got a second. We we asked. We were in this place three times because of. Uh, Can you knock for us? Got out of there. Um, one of one of the questions you asked is what was your name? And uh, as Mike just did exactly that up in the clock tower. We but in this particular place, we got the name of Leslie Moulton. Now, part of our research people, during an investigation uh, with all buildings, uh, including this one that we're, we're sitting in now, we try to find as much information historically. I can hear you. Come down and talk to us. One of the, were you getting uh, a too, if you're shy. Yeah, I'm not sure if you We heard you whisper. Go back to my story. Can you tell us your name? Did you just make that bang noise? Finish the story off. Is we got a, a, a EVP saying Leslie Bolton and Leslie Bolton. Uh, after we did the, the research, we got on the property and Are you banging? So uh, it was a pretty interesting situation. That is amazing. Does any of it ever scare you? Is there anything that like really throws you off? Um, no. Um, not Don't be first. shy. Come talk to us. Experience. Everybody's different, but. Yeah, um, as you experienced when you were here with us, it's pretty much. Uh, I heard you, I heard you know, we don't do a lot of walking around. We just basically uh, set all the equipment, and does the walking around for us. So if we just basically sit and listen and wait, try to stay as quiet as possible. Hopefully, we get. Um, Can you bang again for us? The reason why we, we EVPs are the most common paranormal evidence that's out of all the planet. So uh, Were you part of the Boston Tea Party? Hey Scott, we're hearing, uh, sounds like we got a couple whispers and some banging coming uh, actually from above us. Um, I can't make out what it's saying or where the banging's coming from, but we definitely heard something. We've got a recorder up there, so. We actually have two recorders rolling, one up in the belt tower itself and one in the clock room. Excellent. Well, I keep asking some questions. We're going to listen in and see if we can hear the English boxes ourselves, including the uh, our audience. So again, if our audience has any questions, it's pound sign, OSME, Boston, if you want to tweet us. Uh, you can turn it up. It's going to be on our chat on Google Plus. Or call us at 857 363 and we'll try to answer your questions when we can. And in case you guys are wondering, up there is people, the clock does make some noise, so the clock has its own little sound effect. So when you hear the clicking noises um, as it uh, counts the time down, um, it is a, uh, a weight driven clock, so there are no electric mechanisms um, at all, not by the pendulum. That keeps it in motion. So the clock will uh, move and you hear the gear the electric shift. Um, but above it, on the next level up, it's the bell. And unless the bell is sort of getting ready to, to strike, um, it seems to be making noises. <laughs> so that's a bit unusual, sort of interesting to see what is going on there. Normally, fairly quiet until the chimes. So. Um, I'm not sure what the whisper is. Oh, that's curious. Well, we'll <laughs> let's listen in and see if we can hear anything else. Can you make a noise for us? We know you're here. Can you tell us your name?
Can you knock for us? Are you with the Are you still up there? Can you say something? Can you make a sound? Come down and see us. So, Mike, did you guys around on the Mike, did you guys make a bang a few minutes ago? Yeah, we're getting some bangs, some loud bangs up here. Um, it sounds like it's up by the bell. I can't really tell where it's coming from, but we did we did hear a couple more bangs. I want to show you that outside of them up in the bell tower, we know exactly where all our investigators are right now, and nobody's where those bangs are coming from. I don't know if you can hear. You can hear. We're getting some uh, um, audible interference up here. I don't know what's going on, but you guys keep cutting out. That shouldn't be happening either, right, Bart? It's weird. We're getting like a, like a screeching noise, and then it kind of comes back to normal, and then it will do it again. It's, it's kind of coinciding with the bangs that we're hearing. I could hear the squealing noise interference. I could also hear something that sounded like it was underneath it, almost like a whisper. Yeah, we've heard, we're hearing a couple, we've heard a couple whispers up here so far. Um, I can't really make out what they're saying. Well, hopefully we got two recorders going. We'll connect, we'll catch something. Keep up what you're doing, ask your questions. It sounds like you're getting some responses. Nevertheless, those bangs were very interesting. How far, and uh, you guys out in the audience are not going to understand it, but how far are we, uh, is Mike and then we might go away? That sound like the, the, the bangs are located right Sure. Away. So what Scott's telling us is that, uh, so we're hearing noises. We're in the main hall of Old South Meeting House, and we are on um, essentially the first floor of the building. Uh, it's a really large um, meeting house in size, so it's a big open expanse. There is a, a balcony, and um, up on the balcony level uh, by the door on the power side is where we're hearing uh, the noise of the banging. And they are actually up two levels above that. No, three levels above that. Uh, so they're significantly higher uh, up our steeple than um, what we are sort of hearing down here on the floor. Um, you know, certainly it's an old building and we have a subway station that abuts us on the other side of the building. So sometimes there are unusual noises, but that was a pretty distinct bang um, and really sort of localized. Can you whisper again for us, please? So, see, there, they have a, there of the tower clock, it's the side of the clock. Um, you see on the left hand side those golden looking plates are um, part of what's called the fly. That's what regulates the strike of the clock. Uh, how long the strike Whoa. is possible. Can you say hello again? Is that the furnace? That sounds like a truck outside, although I don't see a truck. Um, we're getting another noise down here. Just yeah, we're still getting some voices up here, Scott. We just got, it sounded like someone said hello. Well, let's listen in and see if we got anything. Bri, you're, you're Don't be afraid to talk to us. Come on down. Do you hear anything? Pops out. Got our attention. You caught my attention, so please come down and talk to us. Was that you, Mike, that just whispered? Yeah, that was me. Okay. You should try to tag it just so that we're aware of what, what could be you guys. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me your name? Did you die here? Do 
Don't be afraid. Come on out and talk to me. I know you're here. I heard you three times. I heard that. Please come down and talk to me. I heard a, what sounded like a whisper. That wasn't you? No, that wasn't us. That oh. was that was caught up here in the bell tower. It sounds like it's coming up above us at the bell tower. I'm, I'm not sure, though. It could be down one flight down below, but it definitely sounded like it was above me. Okay. It was at 7.40 p.m. Just got to tag it. Don't be afraid. Come down and talk to me. We're going to turn quick to a question. We're getting um, Sarah. I have a recorder right here with a little red light on it. If you can come down and speak into the red light, I would appreciate it. Mike, one second, Mike. We have Sarah Jacob. She's one of our. Make a bang or a couple bang. From home, part of the investigation. Uh, Sarah, what are your thoughts of uh, working here in a, in a potentially haunted building? It gets a little creepy at night sometimes, um, if you're the last one out, but I personally have never kind of experienced anything, I guess. But it's a little eerie. When the lights are out in the building, it's a big space, and you're walking through. Sometimes you feel like there's something there and behind you, and, you know, we leave together. <laughs> Evidently, you guys have been in this building a lot more than most people have. Do you have experience that might be here, footsteps or anything like that? Every once in a while, if we're, we have a section that's a newly built section underneath. And if you're down there, sometimes if no one is in the building, you, you hear almost footsteps up on the area, the level that you're on right now. That you can sort of, you think someone's in the building and, you know, someone will run up to check and make sure it's not a visitor left in the building after we've closed. And usually it's not, so... Cold spots. Experience any cold spots by any chance? I haven't. Um, Robin, have you? I would say there's definitely been a few um, a few times where we've had some cold. We actually, during the investigation, had a few bouts where it felt like we were getting cold, and it wasn't near where our, our air vents are, um, where we were sort of getting uh, all of a sudden it felt really chilly in the space, but it wasn't on the side where we have our air conditioning vents. So that was sort of unusual. Um, it's a little tricky in the building uh, with noises and, and, and sort of cold and hot because it is such an unusual old space and the basement area is sort of like a maze. Uh, our office spaces so is all sort of integrated in the public spaces downstairs. So it can get a little bit hard to tell where noises are coming from. But over the years we have also heard stories of uh, people who come, for example, to you know, meet with somebody at the end of the day and they go to walk out together and they um, they think everybody's left the building and then they turn and catch themselves because they're looking behind them because they think somebody's there. Um, or they, they hear what sounds like somebody walking behind them and so they turn around and say, oh, excuse me, and then there's no one standing there. Um, so there's definitely something that happens here in the space and it's usually something you catch when you're alone where you feel sort of something else is around you and it's sort of hard to pinpoint what that is. And that could freak anybody out who uh, <laughs> gets pretty nervous about uh, anything that has to do with paranormal or spookiness. Right, right. If you're not used to it. It seems we lost our connection from our bell tower. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> what's going on? I'll well, see. It's the same one as well. Uh-oh. Really? All right. Well, we are fortunately we're getting some odd audible up there in the bell tower that we've lost our signal to broadcast. So we're going to be So we're going to wrap it up. We, yeah, let's um let's all wrap it up now and um I'm going to have all my investigators uh return back to the meeting hall. Hopefully, Robin, we captured something tonight yeah. uh in that bell tower. We got some pretty interesting things that we've experienced personally right here in this room. And you guys, we're going to keep you updated. So I'm going to check in with Scott and his team from Para Boston and see what um, what sort of stuff we caught. 
And you can follow it on Para Boston's Facebook page or their Absolutely. website. Or you can check it out on Old South Meeting House's website or our Twitter account, LSMH Boston. And we'll keep you informed as uh, things continue to make themselves known here at Old South. We'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, it's, if you've ever, if you're not from the Boston area, ever want to get down to this area uh, as a tourist or just to uh, check out some historical buildings, I can't recommend this building enough that this is one of the best buildings you'll probably go into. But you definitely got to come. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting us be part of the investigation today. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.